Hello guys, Matsmus here, welcome back again. Now recently I did a video on a 8x8 vehicle known as the FNSS PARS, uh, and it got me thinking, you know what, the British Army really does need to kind of catch up with the world of 8x8s and 6x6 vehicles. Now we have had wheeled vehicles, armoured vehicles, come into our procurement process. Unfortunately though, really they were designed for Afghanistan, roadside blasts, protecting the boys, getting them onto the battlefield, slowly but very well protected from IEDs. Unfortunately, well I guess fortunately because I don't want my guys and girls getting hurt by roadside bombs as much as any other conflict, but unfortunately that's just not the case of the British military anymore. They're going back to conventional warfare and the requirement for infantry fighting vehicles and armoured personnel carriers to be quick, mobile and extremely aggressive on the battlefield are a lot more apparent now. Now, recently I've been doing a lot of research into 8x8s just for the fact that they are starting to become a lot more prominent in terms of the market and the niche that they're appealing for. I personally don't have a massive fondness for them because I'm a track buddy and I love my tracks. Um, that's not saying that I don't respect 8x8 and 6x6 wheeled vehicles because clearly they are doing very well for themselves worldwide in the military defense industry. Now, the British Army specifically is what I want to talk to you about today. The British Army is lacking in this department completely. We do not have an 8x8 or 6x6 vehicle that is very, very good at being able to get troops on the ground in a completely enclosed and compartmentalized space. What I'm saying is, is yes, we do have the Jackal, we have the Coyote, and some other smaller wheeled vehicles that are really just designed to get troops into areas very, very quickly. Uh, lightweight vehicles that are mobile from helicopters, um, C-130s and such. But for the most part, we don't have an infantry fighting vehicle that is by wheels. For instance, the Canadian military, which I'm now in the process of trying to get into, although it's taken me up to four years to do so, still waiting by the way, um, do have the beautiful LAV-3, which is an absolutely fantastic infantry fighting vehicle and very, very well renowned, along with the American Striker vehicles. However, the British Army has kind of lacked and fallen behind when it comes to infantry fighting vehicles in a wheeled platform. That's because there haven't really been a requirement for it. The Warriors tend to take up that, you know, primary role, along with the beautiful Ajax that will be replacing the CVRT. However, I really do feel like the British Army needs to catch up and fulfill this role. We require a mechanized infantry light role that is able to get the troops on the ground as quickly as possible, a lot faster than Warrior could or any other infantry fighting vehicle that we currently have, and be, be able to provide, you know, 360 protection, roadside blast protection, and potentially even mount a heavy caliber turret on top. Luckily, the powers that be of the British Army have decided to actually finally catch up in this department. Yes, we are trying to procure an 8x8 infantry fighting vehicle, and what a beautiful one it is. Currently, the British Army is doing something that's actually quite strange in the defense industry because there is currently not a specific bidding program for these vehicles. Strangely, the British Army is potentially, I guess not just the British Army, but the MOD or Ministry of Defense is potentially going to skip the bidding process and go straight for one particular defense industry contractor and just say, you know what? I don't really need to choose or hate have some sort of bidding process between other contractors because I love this product. Behind the scenes, a battle is kind of taking place between the industry and the Ministry of Defense over plans to equip the army with hundreds of these new armored fighting vehicles. Generals want up to about 800 eight-wheeled vehicles known as the Mechanized Infantry Vehicles or MIVs planned for strike brigades, specifically strike brigades, not battle groups that are designed to plod along slowly in the background. These are for quick reaction strike brigades that are a lot faster moving and have longer ranging than tracked units. However, they still have the packed heavy punch of those units. Most MIV designs are available on the market and there's huge amounts of them. As I've already mentioned, there's so many 8x8s out there, they're just flooded the Petriva, the, the there's tons of them i've even just done the fnss pars there's a lot of different variants um but there are fears that the mod is just going to go straight with one particular vehicle and that is the german group's rhein metal boxer vehicle and what a gorgeous vehicle this is i've actually done a video on this guys and if you want to go check that out please hit the link in the uh, description above it should show up any minute here go check it out it's a fantastic vehicle and honestly I am going to say that the MOD has made a perfect choice. This is a fantastic option for the British Army. We require this, guys. This is something that I hate saying. It's a bitter pill to swallow, being I love my tracked vehicles. But this is something long overdue. We need to catch up 
with the militaries of the Western world, NATO forces, that have really picked the right vehicles, the right maneuver, the right concept of these vehicles. We need a vehicle that can get in and out extremely quickly. I mean, yes, we know the warrior can get out of hotspots quickly. We know other vehicles can drop off, you know, troops quite fast. But the fact of the matter is that this vehicle is not only air transportable quite quickly, it can maneuver extremely fast via road. It's capable of transporting both infantry and potentially supplies in multiple different variants and configurations, whether it be, you know, armored ambulance, uh, armored command vehicle, etc., etc. And the firepower this thing can put down range is extraordinary and I can almost guarantee that when they do or if they do release this vehicle it's probably going to have the commonality between the warrior when it upgrades to its 40 millimeter caseless ammo that is great for the fact that a it's going to be cheaper because they can procure more weapon systems b it's going to be a lot more efficient being able to utilize the same ammunition it's going to be a lot more uh, easy to supply with logistics and such most of all guys i really like the concept of these strike brigades these very very quick reaction force troops that can be deployed just about anywhere in the world very very quickly transported by air dropped off and get into a quick reaction force setup warriors and challenger 2s take a long time to transport to hot spots of around the world these vehicles would not be like that in that case they would literally be thrown on a couple of uh, c-17s or c5 galaxies whatever else uh, could transport them around and they get dropped off and off they go and the capabilities that these vehicles have are just fantastic and they're just about a warrior you know, without all the technicalities that come with having to supply, support, and give it its logistics, which is actually, knowing from myself, quite a bit. These vehicles, however, still going to have their own logistical burden, are going to be nowhere near as much as a tracked battle group. That is key, and that's honestly sad to say what's going on in the world today, in the military defense world is they want strike forces that can be deployed extremely quickly to get to these hotspots. For instance, you know, Africa, um, you know, back to Iraq if it kicks off again, Afghanistan, blah, blah, blah. These quick forces that can be dropped off very, very quickly. And the same thing applies, obviously, for Europe. We want to be able to put troops on the ground extremely, extremely fast if something was to kick off. Germany and other European nations have gone down the same route. They rely heavily on wheeled vehicles to supply their troops on the ground. The Boxer is one of the primary vehicles of the German military that they're actually trying to use, and it's obviously working very, very well for them. I am so happy that the British Army and the MOD is actually starting to chop out the red tape of procuring these kind of vehicles and saying, you know what, if we like it enough, we're just going to go out and buy the damn thing, and good for them. I honestly hope they really do go for this vehicle. I have a lot of respect for it, and that's not saying I don't respect some of the other key contenders that are on the shopping list for the MOD, but I just think it's great. I think it's about time that the MOD decided, you know what, let's just get this done. Good for them. I really hope they roll with it. I hope that this contract runs through. It could be worth three billion dollars this contract this is a huge thing it, this isn't penny change guys this is a huge defense contract and i think it's going to be good for everyone involved whether it be those who are building these things hopefully they'll get built in the uk but we'll see it's going to be beneficial for the troops on the ground and most of all beneficial to the taxpayer i think us wasting time tinkering around with different contracts we just pick one and get on with it and it will just get these vehicles to the boys quicker instead of these years and years of processing and waiting for all this red tape to be cut and all this bureaucracy if you notice on a lot of the video reviews I do, you notice that a lot of the developmental stages of vehicles being brought into service is normally down to trials and waiting for other contractors and bidding. And you know what? I'm glad that that's not the case with the Boxer. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Let's hope the Boxer does come into service one day with the British Army. If you did enjoy today's video, please leave me a like, hit the subscribe button, and all those generic useless terms that every YouTuber will ask you to do, I'm going to do the same today. Of course, if you want to support me on my Patreon, I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.